guys, it's Something Rush, and today we're going to be doing a review of the T34 III. So without further ado, let's get started. Cannon-wise, uh, your gun is sort of medium. It's good at some things and bad at others. I'll talk about that in a sec. What you have is basically the same gun that you get on an IS-6 with a 4.5 rate of fire. So DPM-wise, this thing isn't amazing, but in my opinion, it makes up for it with the fact that it has 390 alpha. So you don't need to be constantly shooting to rack up the damage. Uh, pen wise you've got 175 pen which will go through tier 6s and tier 7s pretty easily if you hit their weak spots you're gonna have some trouble against tier 8 and 9 medium uh, heavy tanks and against t54s and wheezy 120s you're not going to be able to pen their front reliably with a piece so just keep that in mind carry a it, it depends on your opinion on gold ammo but if you don't like gold carry a lot of he because you're going to need it especially if you're up against something like an e75 where even your gold round is sometimes going to bounce. So the accuracy is another bad statistic for this tank. You've got 0.46 accuracy, which isn't doing you any favors when you've got a terrible rate of fire. Um, you, you can't really afford for your shots to miss. So this means you really want to be close with this tank. If you're not close, you're just going to miss your shots and it's not worth it. 3.4 second aiming time, again, hurts its ability to snipe. You don't want to be sniping in this tank if you can avoid it. Um... And just don't want to talk about the 3.4 second aiming time, the bloom is also horrendous. So when you drive, the size of the aiming circle gets absolutely huge. I've done everything I can with my crew and my setup to mitigate this. However, I just wanted to let you guys know, you'll probably see it in the replay, so yeah. Guys, you're a medium tank, so you don't have a lot of hull armor, but what you do have is a lot of turret armor. The most comparable tank I'd, I'd be say this is like, it's probably a tier 10 Russian medium. You've got a very strong turret and a very decent hull, so what can happen is if you're hull down, um, there are some weak spots, mainly right next to the mantlet. If they can hit that, they will sometimes pen you and these commander's hatches. But for the most part, it's not a problem. Just don't get shot at by tier 9 and 8 TDs with this thing, and your turret's not going to get penned. Hull-wise, I'd say the hull's actually really good. You can side-scrape with it. At around like this sort of angle, you can sometimes side-scrape tier 8 heavies, easily tier 8 mediums. I, I would stick to not side-scraping tier 9s, though. <laughs> For the um, hull, if you angle it like this, you'll bounce off in a lot of tier 8 and 9 tank destroyers. So if you angle your hull, you can definitely bait shots. You just need to be careful about it, because the ammo rack on this thing is right in the front, uh, right here, I'm pretty sure. And what will happen is the shell will go through your track <laughs> into your ammo rack and you'll get tracked and ammo racked at the exact same time so mobility wise it's a medium tank so it's got about average mobility it's nothing special but it's nothing horrendous 50 kilometers per hour top speed i'd say when you're climbing hills you'll do about 20 and when you're on the flat you'll get up to 45 when you're going downhill you'll easily pass 55 so yeah traverse speed is totally fine you've got 46 degrees of hull traverse so <laughs> you're never going to have any problems with the mobility on this tank you're going to want to focus your crew into turning the aim time as low as possible first thing you're going to want is brothers in arms that'll help with your aim time and accuracy then you're going to want six cents on your commander repairs and safe stowage all the way down now i i put repairs just because i hate being tracked i can't stand it i'd rather deal with the bad gun handling than with being tracked However, if you, if you don't mind being tracked and you're a bit more careful than I am, by all means, get, get smooth ride and snapshot because you're really going to need it on this tank. Uh, camo, because I, re I retrained this crew after a couple of skills and I just put camo there because not getting spotted is always nice. Um, jack of all trades on the commander uh, and everything I could to increase its view range as well. <laughs> I put eagle eye, not because it's any good, just because I wanted to try it out. So uh, that's, that's why it's there. I wouldn't suggest putting eagle eye. I have it, I never use it. One day when there's a sale on, I'll reset it and get something useful. Snapshot and smooth ride. Honestly, this thing's bloom is horrendous. When you move, it just is absolutely horrible. So get those skills as quickly as you can. Then I got armor, so if my gun is damaged, it doesn't affect me as badly. Obviously, it'll affect you a lot with 0.46 accuracy, but I've already found armor pretty useful at times. So I'd suggest getting that clutch breaking and then view range skills. For the equipment, gun laying drive, V stab, rammer. The aiming time on I mean the aiming time on this, like I said, is horrendous. So I've done everything I can to try to minimize that. In my opinion, I'd rather have a rammer over vents, and that was the choice for me, so I chose rammer instead. For shells, I went with 20 AP, 15 heat, and 5 HE. Uh 
the only reason for that is I'm, I'm a heat spam, spamming Unicum. That's that's an honestly a truthful answer. Um, the average player is probably going to want to carry at least 10 HE though. If you're not going to shoot heat, you definitely need HE. So this is somewhat of an average setup, I would suggest. I'd say this is the only tank where I would actually recommend carrying HE because it's actually uh, pretty useful with your accuracy. Um, Consumables, you need a fire extinguisher on this tank. Now, the reason I don't is because I understand where the fuel tanks are on this tank, but the fuel tanks are actually right in the front right, like this side of the hull, right sort of where my clan emblem is. And so you will get lit on fire, and then you've also got um, fuel tanks in the back here. So, warning you, you do get lit on fire a lot, and you will regret it, <laughs> just like I do, if you choose to run no fire extinguisher. Now, the best way to do that, uh, to go about doing this, if you want to run food, it, food is going to be to remove your large first aid kit, put a fire extinguisher, put jack of all trades on your commander, and, and keep the large repair kit, because you get ammo racked, um, and keep the food. So that's probably the best option. I don't do it just because whatever reasons. <laughs> I really don't know why, but eh, whatever. I've, I've learned to play around where the fuel tanks are, and I just sort of avoid showing them to my enemy. So it's it's a bit easier for me, but for most players, you're going to need a fire extinguisher. Like, it's mandatory on this tank. Okay, so we're on the map Malinovka. It's an encounter battle, and the way you want to play Malinovka in a medium tank is you really need to take the hill, but first off, we're going to take a shot in this T-34. So since we're going uphill and going slow, the gun bloom was relatively small, but uh, I actually fully aimed that shot there. So if you saw how big the reticle was, it was way bigger than the T-34. So that's 0 .6 accuracy, 0 0.46 accuracy for you. Luckily, I did hit the guy, but honestly, it wouldn't have been surprising if I missed. Um, yeah, so you just want to take the hill, especially with something as good as this thing. If you can get hauled down, you really have all the opportunities in the world to just totally annihilate your opponents. So I like to come up to this lighthouse, lighthouse here, and we're just going to sort of put shots into people as they come up the hill. The MX M4 puts one into my hull, I put one into him, and I'm just going to side sweep him here. You can see he's going to bounce off my side out of an angle like this, so he takes the shot, bounces. I get a bit lazy. <laughs> I auto-aim him, and somehow it bounces, which... It's the first for me, but whatever. We're just gonna reload. This thing's reload really... It's such a an easy, chill tank to play that I really like it. While you're reloading, you can just wait, and it's it's pretty actually fun to play. So, yeah, we get the kill on the AMX M4. We're reloading, we're just staying safe. And we're reloaded, so I'm gonna go for a shot on the CDC. However, he's falling back. I don't have a very good shot on him, so I'm gonna push up. And right now I have the option to take shots on other people, but I'm not gonna take a low percentage uh, shots when I have a very easy shot on the CDC. <laughs> I mean, if he's in a bad position, might as well punish him for it. The T-34 and whatnot are hauled down, so I'm not going to shoot at them. I'm just going to manage another shot into the CGC, which is pretty good. And yeah, you can see we're playing this hull down and we're in such a good position and we're reducing our exposure time by so much that oftentimes they don't even get a chance to shoot at us. So I take a shot at the CDC because the 175 pen on this gun isn't enough to pen the lower plate on a T28 HDC. So what I do is I lower low heat and I aim for the side right there. As you can see, we do manage to get the kill. He bounces off our turret, which is pretty good. Now I'm just going to basically pause. Well, no, yeah, I'll pause it here. The T34 is on a slope and so that's actually angling his hull upwards. So I do load heat for his hull. However, he's backing up and I notice that. And so I say, if he keeps backing up, I definitely won't need heat to pen this guy. So I load AP, he continues backing up and as he flattens out his hull, it gives me a better angle on it. So I'm actually able to reliably pen it. You can see what's happening is the ground is raising his back. So his hull becomes less angled. Managed to pick our second kill up on that. Wait, did we kill the CDC? I'm unsure. It doesn't really matter. We're going to get the kill on this T34 and an ISU 152 pens us. So where he penned us was our commander's hatch, which is actually pretty impressive. You see, he gets spotted right over there. And honestly, he's the only guy on their team with that much alpha. So it had to be him. Um, put a shot into... Well, we aren't actually able to manage a shot into him. And the reason for that is this thing's aim time. You can see sometimes it lets you down. So you really want to try to uh, keep your engagements to close range because the second you try to engage people at long distances, you just you won't aim fast enough to actually aim your shot. There are going to be a lot of snapshots and you're going to have a lot of misses. Right now we're moving up. We've done three kills. We're on half our HP. 
Um, we're just looking for enemies, but when you're pushing down the hill like this, you really need to be careful because a lot of time, TDs are going to be back here and they're going to be in their base and stuff. So you're going to have people shooting at you from three different angles. I'm using the bushes here really well. I'm chilling. I'm waiting for my teammate. The ISU gets lit. So I'm going to look for a shot on him, but the SU-152 actually gets spotted. He's shooting heat, judging by his... No, he wasn't shooting heat. Never mind. <laughs> doesn't really matter he's dead now and now there's an su 101 in front of us i'm spotted so i'm actually really worried about r3 right now um but honestly artillery has pressing matters and you know he just got lit so he's gonna die very quickly i put auto aim on the artillery and i'm actually gonna use it really really well here you're gonna see me look around that's the main use that you should that's the main reason you should use auto aim when you auto aim on someone it holds the gun on that tank so it actually gives you the opportunity to look for other threats and, and that's really how you should be using it Right now we're pushing up, we're looking for the ISU. There aren't really any major threats on the enemy team anymore, so I'm not too, I don't need to be too cautious. The Pershing is spotted, he's the second biggest threat. So now we're gonna go looking for an ISU and I expect him to be in this sort of bowl over here. I'm lit, whatever. Um, the ISU's right there and I'm gonna take a very quick shot at him and the reason for that is his gun will reliably pen the T-34-3's turret. I hit the dirt, but it's not that big of a deal. We're just gonna, we get safe and he's gonna shoot. So we're gonna be able to pick up our fifth kill. I'm gonna reasonably aim that shot and we, yeah, pretty easy kill if, I, if I'm honest. Right now there's the Pershing. He's using the SU-101 for cover. What you're gonna see me do is I'm gonna aim for his hull and that's 175 pen for you. So <laughs> yeah, it can be pretty horrendous at times. We bounce the Pershing's hull at pretty slight angle if I'm honest. But we're just going to YOLO him. He's going to die soon, so I want to get damage, and I want to go chasing after the Cromwell, who hasn't been lit yet. So I get close to him. I get the kill. I put auto aim on so I can look in front of me while I'm looking, like I'm looking for the Cromwell. Auto aim keeps the gun pointed at the Pershing, and we manage to get our sixth kill. Going to keep pushing forward so I can get more damage on the Cromwell. Uh, and we've got actually two AP shells left, so I'm just going to speed this up. We get lit halfway through the field here, so yeah. As you can see, though, we're going about 40 kilometers an hour. As we get spotted, we're at 40. Looking for the Cromwell, he shoots, and he actually misses with some sort of HE shell. I saw the tracer, and I recognized HE, so yeah. RCDC is shooting HE also. I don't understand why. It doesn't really matter. Put a shot into the Cromwell. He's on 277, so I'm just going to push into him. He's not going to kill me, so yeah, whatever. <laughs> Managed to pick up our 7th kill. That's basically game. The AMX M4 says leave the kills for Lemming, but in all honesty, I, I tell him that I don't need them, right? Like, I have so many credits and XP, more, like, the Black Prince could probably use the experience more than I. So, the SU-152 gets the kill, but whatever, and that's the game. So, let's go look at the end plates. Alrighty, so as you can see, that was 5,000 XP, Mastery Badge, High Caliber, Top Gun, 153,000 credits earned... <laughs> this thing's pretty good at making credits if you ask me. 4,814 damage, 7 kills, 1658 base XP. <laughs> this could actually be a submission for my replay contest, but obviously I can't win, that'd be sort of biased. We ended up doing 2k spotting damage, um, and that's basically it. We didn't block a lot of damage blocked by our armor, but the whole reason, like the whole way you want to use a turret in, in a tank like this is not to take hits. It's just to be so quick that the enemy feels they have to aim for your weak spots. And if you're fast enough, they won't even take the shot. So the way I was playing hull down was actually really good. Even though it didn't look like my turret was doing me a lot of benefit, if I had been in something like a CDC, a lot more people would have been shooting at me because I would have been the least armored on the team. So yeah. Hopefully this guide was helpful. If you want to see more, be sure to the like and the subscribe button, and I hope to see you around. Later, guys. Bye-bye.